Hello and welcome to episode number three of The Mess Rooms. You joined with myself, Ellis, Dave, Neil and um, Chris. Uh, <laughs> um, apologies for not getting one out before Christmas. We were meant to, but it were manic and everyone was skiving. You, I went on you, holiday. You were... You were I was skiving. I love it. I was skiving. You were away for a week. I was told you were away for a week. Time off for good behaviour, wasn't it? We're all in holidays, Chris. We haven't been allowed to have all year. Do you remember? We're to the grind all year, aren't we? We're like COVID again, where I was just sat in the office on my own. I'm like, guys, guys. What a really good idea. If you come on Sunday at three o'clock in the morning, Ellis, that's how it'll be. We all got back from Wally and then run away. three o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. But, um, we uh, at the end of last year, it was uh, for us. It was like a bit of a close down for the year. Uh, we had so much going on. We had such a manic year, and then this year has just sort of begun and just gone crazy. Yep. Uh, but it's uh, this incredibly exciting year for us as we start getting through more and more of our own productions, like the Wickham due any well, basically from now about three or four weeks yeah. for the first liveries and then obviously mm -hmm. the, the black five we've got more thompson's uh we'll have announcements at some point later this year um so it's just it's gonna be a big big year and with us on the pre-owned as well we've yeah. just uh we've been out this all this week pretty much haven't we pretty much yeah not set foot in the office no really. no um this I'm, is probably the first time we've all been able to be pinned down isn't it, it? Is, really yeah, between yeah. Those it's, you it's, might think we're here just sat on these seats all the time but honestly it's like herding cats sometimes yeah. together i think it's the first time we've had the time to sit down since wall the show properly with people yeah. on holiday uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's um it's been crazy hasn't it it's, yeah it's uh it's been pretty brilliant hasn't it and I think um, I'm. I uh, it sounds bad, but uh, once uh, Christmas Day were done, I, I would wanted to be back in the office because uh, I knew what all the things that were going on this year and how exciting it were going to be and stuff. Um, and at the forefront of that, um, as I told you guys the other day, we've got this new show at Swindon. Yes, yes, on fourth yes. of Feb as yeah, well, yeah. which uh, for those unaware is the. I always get it the wrong way. Association of Largest Scale Railway Modelers, I believe it is. Yeah. ASLRM. Uh, their show on the... Is it the 4th of the Sat Saturday, Saturday the 4th, 4th of, of Feb. Feb at uh, Swindon Museum, isn't it? Swindon Steam. Swindon yeah. Steam. Yeah. Yeah. Great yeah. venue. Yeah. I've always wanted to go, I've so never it's been. my to go. I've, I've never been. been. Have you been there? I've been once or twice, yeah. It's the... Um... Museum of the Great Western Railway, isn't it? So it's... it's in there. another... <laughs> <laughs> you, no idea. In, in another reincarnation, I put Santa's Grottos up there. <laughs> <laughs> I used to make Santa's Grottos. Yeah, and we used to do the one there. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Well, I do yeah. like how Chris is making the negative comments about the GWR, but he's wearing a Brunswick green shirt <laughs> today. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, we both are. We always we always match them, me and Chris. I'll get you a little copper cap to wear as well. Oh. So. But I no, it's, it's a brilliant museum, guys. Yeah. You'll love it. And I'm sure those who've been as well I've mm, already yep. enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, if, if this is out before we get there, put some comments in the uh, in the section below and let us know what it's like. I and mean, if it's going to be exciting, it'll be good to hear yeah. from you guys as well. Yeah. I'm but, I'm so, looking forward to seeing all the railway Anna as well that they've got yeah, there and stuff so like that's that. That's the bit that gets me. I'm not too bothered about the the locals. It's the bits that are off the locals that's what left. Good to hear from the researcher, <laughs> in it? That no, <laughs> <laughs> don't care about locals. It's, it? <laughs> it's the chunks of local that you don't get to see. Though, yeah, that's, I know that's mean. the part that yeah. I enjoy. You mean the real way on attached? Yeah, the real way on the nameplates yeah. and the, the numbers and yeah. the you know the little yeah. flame cuts and bits and pieces. <coughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's always interesting it's to good see to, uh, It's good to have another uh, show. And for those unaware, it's um, all gauge and larger scales is pretty much what's there. So it's, yeah. it's called the larger scales show. It's generally speaking, O gauge, gauge, one G scale, bit of gauge, free stuff. And then actually you do usually get a bit of five inch gauge, seven and a quarter, stuff like that. Right. Uh, used to be at Reading. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe it's the Association of Larger Scales and they've merged with the people who were doing the Bristol all gauge show. As oh, kind of the day, and right. they've uh, merged together. End of, yeah. oh, end of was January. Yeah. Bristol was an yeah. absolute stellar show. It, it was a good show. Up, that. Didn't really yeah. Well, yeah. well, this show used to be in Reading at the Rivermead Leisure Centre. Uh, we used to stay at um, the, the hotel just around, uh, just uh, 
down the road from it used to go to that yeah. galleon if you yes. remember because yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. uh, we filled up there <laughs> um but yeah i'm i'm really looking forward because i was looking forward to the show coming back again another mm. sort of old gauge and larger one down there so and that's sort of the first place to see how you can see us in the flesh, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. coming up after that. I mean, I don't think we've got time to say every show we're doing this year, but the first few, we've got Model Rail Scotland towards yeah. the end of February. It's yeah. always a cracker. Yeah. It's your favourite. My favourite show. Only because of the pizza Strain. and pasta. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, 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 is, it, is, it is one of my favourite shows, is that a big year? Yeah, you it's, know, a good it's, it's a good show. And then yeah. a week after, we swing back down the other way, don't we? We're down to the Gage Old Guild at Kettering. Yeah. 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 At the start, start of yeah. March. Kettering's actually yeah. a nice one, and the hotel's a good one too from last then, year. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go for the full set here now. I think we've got Ali Pally, Alexandra yeah. Palace yeah. in yeah. London, yeah. about the middle of March. Then after that, it's um, Modern Image All Gage over at Crew, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. So, one more you've forgotten about. New one as well. Kempton Park. Kempton Park. Park. Oh, yeah, of course. When's that? We're going racing. Uh, is that start of April? Ah, see, I was in oh, Sorry, oh, here we go. No, oh, here we go. I'm going to have to double check the... No, it's not. I think it's May. I'm going to have to double check the date on that. We I'll have got a list. Like... When's the yeah. Barnsley or Gage one as well for people up in the north? It's about June. Yeah, I was going to say that, that weeks Early after. June. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's like usually second Saturday in... Yeah. That's June, what used to be Doncaster. We'll get the website with um, yeah. with all the exhibitions. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> but there's quite a few, whatever scale you are, whether you're all gauge or larger scale specific, um, whether you come and see us for the double O, the N, the H O that we usually have at the yeah. likes of Ali Pally and Model Rail so Scotland. If you can get near us at Ali Pally, we're always absolutely hammered, aren't we? I, I'm, yeah. I've never done Scotland, so I assume that's going to be the same where it's just constantly busy yeah. yeah the friday's yeah. really busy at, at scotland scotland yeah yeah, yeah it imagine. really is yeah yeah so, bring yeah. your best um barge and elbows yeah yeah no it, it's nice to get back to shows and to get start getting back to a full complement of shows that we usually have done in the past but haven't done and they've mm. sort of well last year we were still a bit hit and miss one yeah, we were all a bit worried whether stuff were going ahead there, wasn't yeah. going ahead have they cancelled it people yeah. didn't want to commit even though most mm. did go ahead last year. There yeah, were still a yeah, few yeah. that people weren't committing to, were there? No. Uh, so hopefully now we're back to a normality I mean, again. We've always got mm. a few regulars at shows, haven't we? We've all got people we'll bump into. Well, I think, say, I, said oh, it, for I, think I said it the, 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 on one of the other ones that it surprises me you're at Model Rail Scotland and you get a chap comes up to you that's the same chap you see at a show at Reading. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, yeah. Like, <laughs> Some dedication. Yeah, no. I don't think I could do that. Yeah, long. you know, yeah. that surprises well, say, me. Saying that, I've had a couple of people saying, oh, yeah, I've watched the mess room now. That's good. So, yeah. you know, starting to hear people. that coming no, through. So not a couple. The couple of people. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Is that My what mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Exactly. Shout out to Alice's mum and dad. Thanks for watching. <laughs> but um, yeah, really good. And then obviously we had uh, before, just before the end of the year as well, we had Black Five running samples that we, we were did. working hard on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, um, which obviously, it's. I always say to people, it's uh, it's not that we're not working hard on it, but it's the quiet period of a project. The where it seems like you're doing not it's like when you it's like when you build a house and you're yeah. doing all the foundations and everything it takes no months to happen for and then all of, a su- all of a sudden bricks are up and the house is complete so yeah. I mean, it's like opposite way around with the black five we everything the went together you get yeah. yeah bricks are up and now <laughs> you know we're just starting uh the final running mm. but touch wood it looks like after i mean we were talking fractions of millimeters where oh, the yeah. and the one much it were it basically for those at home uh, we want it to run around second radius curves, points, S-bend at full speed. Yeah. And we want it to do it flawlessly over and over again, nine till five, every day, well, all day, every day, every day. you know. Yeah. So we just ran it for two weeks solid, didn't we? Yeah. And um, in it derailed a couple of times mm-hmm. within running around 20 times or so. Yeah. So we just literally nicked out a little bit of movement in the motor. It Points of millimetres, one minute, nothing. every time. Um, yeah. Then it ran but, fine, perfectly. And this was really interesting, actually, wasn't it? And we, we do it on second radius because that's like the extremity of it. And after about 30 laps or so on the S-Bend that we'd made via set track points, the um, the second radius points, just started derailing, didn't it? It did. And we... Uh, we tried another brand's uh, model, and that derailed. And that like, derailed as well. Why? What? So uh, what we found was that um, after the the Black Five going at full speed, 
hitting was it the check plate on it the It was it was the actual point up. point blade on yeah. the curved part of the point blade. Yeah. It was the front wheel was hitting it and the weight of the locomotive had actually bent the nickel silver rail. So yeah. it was actually out of gauge and it was falling into the far foot basically. Yeah. Um, Only because we were running it about yeah. scale 150 <laughs> yeah. miles per hour. It's, sort of it's thing. not something that uh, you would do on your own layout. I'll no, no, no. Happen. I'll no. see how um, but, how shareable the videos we've got are. Yeah, we've got, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, yeah. I mean, I mean, really, it is ridiculous. The, the speed. We do we just need to put the "Don't try this at home"? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Oh, well, the thing is, but, we need to destroy it before the people. We do. We do. I mean, for people that are listening, we didn't destroy it. That just it works fine. For people that are listening and that you know, if 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 any of you are a kit builder, I'm sure you know you've got the odd time on a kit where you've just got to do a little bit of snagging, let's call it. Yeah. So all we were doing were ironing out those tiny little bits before the, we go to the factory and say, press the button and make. Yeah. You know, So it wasn't that there were big problems, but these, big pro- these small problems have got to be sorted before you as the yeah. customer buys your model. I guess we've just got high standards, really, is essentially the way we've, we sort of do ourselves down a lot of the time where we just... Want to put our time into getting the model right, isn't it? That's... We're on it perfect, don't yeah. we? Yeah, well, yeah. You know, we, yeah. We, we had the same on the Wickham, didn't we? The, we did. We yeah. did. I'm yeah. sorry, it was before you started here, so <laughs> you, you can't join in this. Like, you just shifty on up for a second, but <laughs> you, you just sit on end. <laughs> <laughs> but but we said it in another mess room, didn't we? Where the three of us were like so close, and we want to start making it, but and it, and we knew it was like another three month delay, but we we're like. Yeah, you've just got to wait. It's got to be done. Yeah, it's it's got to be, it's got to be done at the end of the day. We've said it before as well. We're all modellers, so yeah, it's got to yeah. be right for, for us. us. I'd want to mm. come into the showroom and say, one black five, please. Mm. Something like that at the same time. Have you got um, one pre-ordered up? One thing to do at the end of today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, seriously, coming back to it, that's the thing I think is... Yeah. If we got mm. it and objectively said, well, that's a black five, we wouldn't want to sit there and sort of think, well, mm. you know, it's mm. got to be something. Could have done better here. That should have been know, done we right. Yeah. Say. We should have took that month to do that, but we yeah. didn't. Yeah. 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 Totally agree. Totally so, agree. So we're getting there with it now, aren't we? It's, we get it's, 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 it's yeah, just, it's, it's all like, it's all just, it's good. It's all now, just full throttle. It's just all happening. Scary thing, I think, is that's project two. This year, Three. isn't it? Never oh, mind Project One, yeah, yeah, yeah. with the yeah. Wickham coming through. Yeah, yeah. It's... and then I think with the Tom, final Thompson bit yeah, coming through breaks. as well, aren't we? They're about a month from now. Yeah, uh, yeah. they're literally about to go. Into... I can't wait to see a, a blue one. Yeah. Yeah. Just because it's a totally different yeah. livery to It'd all be nice the rest of yeah. Thompson in another Thompson color in than, BR blue. Uh, yeah, pre BR yeah. color really. I totally agree. Oh. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think they'll uh, they go really well. They go really well. Well, Hornby Magazine kindly did um, an article on the teak ones as well. Yes, and yeah, it was a nice nice write up. It that? was a really nice yeah. write up. Um, was it um, right? Yeah, I think, I think so. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it, again, when you see him in print in some with someone else looking at them again, you realise how nice they are as models. Because yeah. it, it's hard because we we look at everything so. Critically, and you are, and often, and you almost forget sometimes until you see it stop and look again. That's the thing. You get blasé with it. The word, yeah, you, do. Yeah. you, you get you know used that to seeing old it. Sort of thing when you say you say a word often enough and it loses its meaning. Yeah, you know yeah. we've all tried. Yeah. It, yeah. it yeah. actually does work. But, but yeah. don't forget, we've we, we've been seeing the Thompsons for nearly two two, two years really? on and off. Because exactly. I've been getting yeah. samples. And yeah, so cards you, you just get blasé with them being around. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm you know I'm genuinely looking forward to the blue one. Because yeah. a lot of people are wanting BGs. Yeah. Because yeah. at the end of the day, not everybody's got the room to run a full passenger train. But choose what you're modelling in all gauge. I'm mm. sure you've got room for some parcels vans. Right up to the well, the, done the it. thing yeah. is as well, it takes them really off region then as well. Mm. Because yeah. the Thompsons, yeah. okay, they got around a little bit when they came into the maroon liveries, but parcel stock, especially pre nationalisation. Oh, We've spoke that. about this at length, you know. Yeah. And you can go crazy when you're going into the sixties yeah, and the seventies with yeah. your maroons and your blues. Yep. They're all over the place. Yeah. All over They're the everywhere. place. You've only got to look at the old red, red bank parcels. That had anything and everything slapped in it. It yeah. was just can he carry all parcels? Could press it. Get it in. If it had <laughs> wheels on it, they'd have a go and yeah, even well, you're right. Will you two be having a blue one? I mean I will. 
Oh, is it is it in your uh, remix? Your remix, uh, yeah. yeah. Or is About it just five out? minutes ago, why, why I said sh- something excuse me. like at the end of the show. Ellis, can I just say so back Why are these two skirting repeat. around not having one? No, no, well, exactly. So it's in theory. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get Rubik counter, they're just a bit too early for me. All yeah, right, okay. too, but we've got a repentory. What livery do you want one in, mate? <laughs> <laughs> You've got too many press laws to wear there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just finished an order for 21, 22? 22 press laws for one gentleman, yes. Mm. I did. With well, numbering. With numbering. Don't forget yes, the numbering. Numbering, don't forget. <laughs> and plates. And plates. Just while yeah. we carry on this podcast, by the way, um, anything else I need to backpedal on, just give us a bit of a heads up so I can prepare an answer. Well, I've just been, I've uh, spent, I'm going to pretend I did all the work in it. Uh, I haven't. I, I've spent all morning uploading uh, your weathering video yes. to YouTube, which Adam <laughs> kindly edited and filmed, uh, filmed and edited. And it took it took five five hours to upload it because it's in four K and all that. Which uh, for for those who don't know what four K means, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uploading four K and everything, and uh, yeah, that's gonna if you, if you haven't watched it already, having when you see this video, uh, we do have under our Ellis Clark trains how to series. Uh, your uh, demonstration my, my on, to... on how, how a weather a press flow and what you get for the money that you pay at the end of the day I yeah. suppose you could yeah. say so what, what we actually 20, do with it 20 what's it to weather a press flow from Neil what, 25 pounds of weathering um, you've put me on the spot now that's not fair is it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <not> fair. <laughs> we got to ask you but now yeah. I think I it is 25 quid. I know whatever yeah. it is when yeah. you see the standard you just think oh, I'm not even going to bother I, I think just pay for Neil to do it pay me a fiver <laughs> I'll mix up some cement I'll dip it in I'll put it to the side and done well that's next well I'll tell you what then <laughs> if, if you think it's that easy you could do it next time well, it, oh. it, it, oh, oh, oh. well uh, there's a thought. What, uh, it's not like pottery where you put it into a slip and take it out. You know? <laughs> Neil's weathering challenge is this. So, uh, do you think you can do it? If you, you think do it's it. that easy, you crack on and do it one then. We could have a little bit of a weather rock, couldn't we? A weather rock. A weather rock. <laughs> a weather rock. It's weathering on, isn't it? It'll be me taking weathering off when he's done it. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got a record, uh, 69 pound model, haven't I now? Too, uh, but... So what we're going to do, a little stickers weathered by Ellis Clark, and then a sticker over the top, re-weathered by Neil. Re-weathered by Neil. Now completely re-weathered by. <laughs> so tune in next time for a slightly more tense version <laughs> of the mess room. <laughs> Is, is that happening then? Are we doing that in episode I don't know, no, are we serious? I'm up for that. I'll yeah. do that. Yeah, I'll have it. I'll have it. Yeah. Are we so, serious? We'll do yeah. it then. Oh, our our yeah. episodes have a budget of £10, so that's, that's, that's right. seven episodes <laughs> that's, worth, that's of, uh, worth of uh, budget <laughs> yeah. gone right there, isn't yeah. it? Um, all right, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe we need... Uh, Maybe we need to bring in someone. Maybe you can weather one as well or something. So we've got Poor a comparison. Chris getting dragged oh, into it. He had done no wrong. It wasn't me. <laughs> we could put them both up to camera, not see who they're from, get people to decide like generation which one they, game. <laughs> decide which one they look This like. is my next backpedal moment. Here we go. <laughs> what, right? You don't want you know, generation like game. Say, but just if, if, it turns out that I'm better than you at weathering. Happen- what are you going to do? Run the company and you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Deal. Neil Arbert is trained. Arbert is trained. Yeah, yeah. Has a ring to it, doesn't it? We oh, change the adverts to have Neil stalking as well rather than Albert. You know, oh, no. Hey, dear. Oh, dear. So, uh, well, that'll be fun then. Right, we? okay. If yeah. we're doing that, we'll go working this one out then. Yeah. Well, you and me are also meant to be having a diorama off as well, aren't we? Yeah, we need to set the parameters for that. Uh, yeah, it's got, it's one of those <laughs> where you? we both say we're going to do it, but we probably never will. <laughs> I'm, done I'm actually, I've I'm got good. a shopping list. A diorama off. What, should we um, should we set the size? I think yeah, we should get it in size. the cabinet. So it can fit in the oh, camera. I want a bit no, because I've got ideas. That <laughs> like you're, going, it, you're doing a brown slide. Um, I've got ideas <laughs> that render that. Um... So if we're all bringing stakes to this poker game, <laughs> I'm going restoring full size trams this weekend. So if anyone wants to bring one of those to the office and fix one of those as well, I've it's... got something close to a full size thing down there. So we'll uh... <laughs> we'll have a look at that later on. I'm, yeah. I'm plastering the kitchen this weekend. If you have any ideas for some kind of competition we could do on the mess room, just let us know. Are you a good blaster? I could do it. I could with blast. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's good. good to know. So good when, when Ellis knocks through next wall, yeah. Yeah. is that how you're doing your weathering on your press floor then? <laughs> that's the plan. You only yeah, spare yeah. tile grout. <laughs> Get it on. Oh, dear. So, um... Oh, there we are. We've got a few uh, little things. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I don't know how we're going to work these ones out, but yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be fun. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to borrow your way. You're going to be having fits because I'll, I'll be in, sat in your weathering booth and you'll be over the shoulder. Oh, as, as a point, you can't practice. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm going to do it straight off. All oh, right. No so. practice. I've cool. seen how you do it. <laughs> Just like that, exactly. Yeah, like that. Oh, oh, uh, I've got, I've got, I've got some, uh, I've got some weathering secrets I'm bringing uh, to the table that I'm going to try. Yeah. But seriously, uh, if there is anything uh, you that want from to your war, war figures when you were younger. Try, yeah. I'm trying to do a series. I know Bumsy. you're trying to. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to keep this ship set. <laughs> you're, you're, that's my job. Okay, so I'll sit up a little. Yeah, yeah. Norman, Dave, you've if you've been affected by any of the issues, <laughs> <I'm letting laughs> no, seriously though, if there is anything obviously you want us to cover in the mess room, anything you want to ask us about, we are doing the how-to videos mm. now as well, and we're running out know. of ideas quickly. Here, so right? <laughs> we're filling. So you know, we, we make it for you guys at the end of the day. So so just let us know. Yeah, definitely. The main thing we have forgotten is the mess room. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, Wait, is yeah. there look? Yeah. So these actually arrived as we were filming today. These. Oh, it's uh... not one of Ellis's. Ellis hasn't built it then. No, 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 no. <laughs> this isn't the Ellis building challenge. Oh, the plastering does look good, Neil. So you've done yeah. all right there, mate. Um, this actually, I think a lot of people don't quite know us for this sort of thing, but mm, we yeah. do do a lot of the brand new products as well from Helgen, Dapple, etc. Backman have just brought out a load more of the scene craft buildings. This mm. is one of them. Yeah. A lot of diesel depot ones. So me and Chrissy's eyebrows obviously raised a little bit yep. when these yeah. came so, in. One in the bag. So these are the resin ones, aren't they? Yeah. A bit like what people might know as a Hornby Scaledale strap yeah, type similar, of similar thing. Similar thing. thing. But in or a Batman scene craft. You no, know, but I meant as in, <laughs> as in what I mean is nah, I in all gauge, you know. But yeah. um, yeah. well, this one is actually a mess room. Yeah. 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 So we thought we'd have the mess room on the mess room. Yeah. So they're a nice little. Thing. They're nice, they're, and you could put yeah, you, could, you could you could uh, put some interior in it and yeah. some interior walls, etc. Did you notice they're actually etched metal frames? I did. Well? Yeah, they're etched yeah. etch windows. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah they are. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're nice. That's a good idea. And That's there's a quite idea. a few bits. There's fueling points. There's fuel tanks. That sort yeah, of thing as well. Yeah. So yeah, we. Although obviously the main thing is Thompsons, the Black Five mm. that are doing etc. We do do the rest. Yeah. For all gauges. The, well, the you know, other thing about that is, I just think you mentioned in Black Five going off a little bit. You could almost say this is a sort of a modern modernization plan building from the sort of middle fifties onwards. Yeah. When yeah. they sort of started to get local sheds a little bit cleaner is and it, what have you. Is it the one that's based at Bescot? Throwing yourself, throwing you and across there. I, I've got I, a feeling. I, I reckon you might be onto something there. Actually, but you, you know, put, you you could sorry, you could I mean, use I'll it as away, as yeah. you know back end of steam as well, couldn't you? you know, so, properly, <laughs> so properly, properly Building weathered spine. black five with that sort of thing yeah. here. It you've mm. got the Ellis weathering and diorama challenge there already. <laughs> yeah, so you? all so I need giving him tips. <laughs> the, with the diorama challenge, we are not allowed to use anything ready to run on it. Deal. Yeah, including That's stock. <laughs> well, the, no, the stock isn't part of it. The Are you building it. your own track as well, Alice? I am, genuinely. All right, well, that's me yeah. told, isn't it? Genuinely, yeah. I'll try getting a cheap joke like the rest of the episode there, and he's actually, not. that's me told. He's not using his own track. I am. Who is it? Dave, we're not you. involved in this challenge. Wait, wait, you're going to... I'm... Dave, are you going to change your away. name to something like Peter Collister so it says Pico on the bottom? <laughs> of it? You just wait. I, I'm, I'm going to... We're uh... not involved in this, are we? No. no. We, we just, you know, we keep the standards. Yeah. Oh, I'll yeah. tell you what, then. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you two a challenge. Oh, oh no. Yeah. I've got to make me a coffee. <laughs> it's my, fine with some Nest coffee in there. And, uh, and uh, coffee. we'll see how it comes out. Cold, 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 cold. That's your challenge. That, that is not a how to video. Well, <laughs> how not to. How not to. Yeah. Brilliant so, stuff. Yeah. But yes, the, the nice, uh, it looks like it's got brass uh, drain, drain pipe. pipes and things like that on it. Um, nice. The real nice. The, in fact, the full range is really, really good. I've always found those. And the diesel, is it a diesel refueling plant that yeah. also came? Yeah. They're lovely. They're yeah. really nice. Um, and they come pre done as well. Yeah. This yeah. is how yeah, you yeah. get them out of the packet. They're a nice so. space for them, aren't they? When you, you just think, oh, I've got that corner, and what am I going to do with that corner? Mm. And, yeah. And I, and I also think they're not really known about that much. They're not really that pushed. I think they're a no. bit of a sleeper hit. It's yeah. a yeah. weird mm. range, isn't it? They did a load of good for you year back, and then it. Just what it's, disappeared. What it's back again. Well, yeah, they're now they've really come back with the wars, haven't they? Yeah. Come back yeah. They're nice. Fun. They're all right. Yeah, I yeah. like them. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm yeah. a fan. So there you go. If you want your own mess room, to you could even film your own mess room episode in that, couldn't you? There's a tiny version of all four of us in there somewhere. And, uh, <laughs> <Is> there? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a, uh, one of those like stop motion uh, versions of it sort yeah. of thing. Well, so, I reckon we end part one there. Yeah. And on part two, we've all... Uh, 
brought something in of um yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, so sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So let's do it. That's the end of part one. Join us for part two shortly. These are the Ellis Clark Trains O Gauge Working Drop Head Buckeye Couplings. They work just like the real things. So what many have been asking for an O Gauge compatible with link couplings and most Buckeye couplings. Available to buy now from us, Ellis Clark Trains. Nothing quite like a good kip on a BR Mark 1 sleeper. Actually. Why don't you treat your O gauge folk to a little luxuries of our BR Mark 1 sleeper? Produced exclusively for us by Darstev. Available in maroon and blue and grey. Available on the link below. <sighs> right. I think it's breakfast time. This is Clark Railworks, and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains, and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers, and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models, and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO, or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. Hello and welcome to part two of episode three of The Mess Room. Uh, so, in part two, we are going to be looking at um, something that we've all brought in, yeah. something we're all into model railways or railways, yeah. uh, and you made a really good point. It'd be nice to, you know, not just necessarily talk about it, talk about what we do, but actually show, show what we do and stuff. Yeah, um, what we actually do. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So, do you want to hit us off, Chris? Yeah. What have you brought well, in, mate? Um, something I've been working on for two years. <laughs> <laughs> More through laziness that it's took so long. Um, it's your standard, well, it was your standard Helgen Class 20. Um, back in the early 90s, Hunslet Barkley bought a couple of pairs, um, fitted them up with long range fuel tanks, and they were used for uh, sand dye for wee, well, wee blowing season. And uh, they used to top and tail. They had a couple, they had a pair down south and a pair up northwest. And uh, I've been modelling for. Oh, since I was about that big. Um, my dad dragged me up into railways and I just kind of grew up with it from there. And this is what I remember as a kid, in sort of mid 90s stuff when I was being dragged around the country to look at trains. And... So, would that have pulled like a weed killer train sort of thing that you, you've seen mentioned before and photographed? Yeah. So, with this, there'd be another 20, which, yeah. Um, ironically, this one, this one's mine, and I'm doing another one, which is 905. I was just about care. to ask you uh, the number. <laughs> um, so this is 2903, and I'm doing yeah. 2905 for Dave. Um, so he's having one end of the train, and I'm having the other end. Yeah. And then it's going to be a couple of TTAs, probably be lazy, and usually dapper ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then butcher them about to get, get the right pipe work on. Yeah. And a couple of Mark 1s, which I'll probably be lazy and go to Sean at Easy Build again for because he can do some nice sides for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so hum humorous with the with the weed killing train then and like you say, where would where would they have gone and what did they do to the TTAs to change them assuming they put pipes glowing down on to yeah. yeah. So essentially they they went everywhere. You yep. name it if there was a sort of rail service line that needed, passenger yeah. service, yeah. you know. Um They'd send them down to clean the, the mulch off the, yep. the sort of ground up leaves. 
Um, so is it cleaning like the moss off and things like that? that so no, more oh. fallen leaves. So if you think when right, you get right, when okay. everyone complains in winter, oh, or, or autumn, I should say, the trains yeah. cancel because the leaves on the leaves line. On the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like is greasy that, rails. Does it yeah, degrease okay. yeah, them yeah, as yeah. well? It it goes wrong and it blows a jet. Um, and I'm sure it's a mixture. It's not just water. And it yeah. it fires the leaves or the mulch or the the slippy residue off the rails. Yeah, and yeah. they'll send it round in the morning, send it round in the evening. I think last yeah. year in in Skipton, we had two, didn't we, come through? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, throughout the day, we had one in the afternoon and one in the evening. Yeah. Well, um, these did a bit more as well, didn't they? Because these actually went around doing actual weed killing yeah. as well. As yeah. well as just yeah. clean. Yeah, uh, in like the rest of the year. Clean. I'm yeah. with you. Mm. Yeah. There were, whereas now they have the MPBs and, um, come on, what the wagons? I can't remember the wagons. RHTT, RHTT wagons. wagons. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so you could, could say these were like the first generation of this type of... of this type of thing, then really? Yeah, well, um, no, these these were the first privately owned ones. Right. So you had BR had their own, had their own variations. variations. They had sort of re- recycled original stock. Uh, but Hunslet Barkley, and they were later. Who took them over in Hunslet Barkley? Was it, it wasn't straight to DRS, was it? Normix Chipman, DRS. No, on that the was side it. Normix Chipman, them, yeah. yeah. Um, essentially, these were the first kind of privatised version of that. But because. They went round and did such a lot of work. They extended the fuel capacity on them. Yeah. But with twenties being so small as a class, and there's no room between mm. there and there really to get out in. Um, they wanted to add more fuel capacity, so they they added extended range tanks to the sides, and they were piped down. To, so they've got the normal fuel up. tank here, yeah. and then one on each each side. So a bit like on an O eight in a way, almost. Or, yeah, you, you know. can't get that on a normal Helgen Class 20, no. can you? No, no, no. So the, the Helgen Class 20s are as built, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they were, they're such a niche modification with the long-range fuel tanks. There was only a handful like that. Um, so essentially, I just we between us, we asked a friend who Do could draw. Yeah, go, go for it. It's all tied together. So um, <laughs> have you then, and then have you repaint? So you've then repainted it, resprayed it. Um, yeah, so we um, started Life Blue. Yep. Started Life Blue. And then we had a friend who is quite competent with CAD. Yep. Um, I think this was the original set. He did us two. Oh, all right. Um, okay. Yeah, that's slightly shorter. Yeah. Uh, so we did us two different sets, but... Um, Can I have a look if you yeah, don't mind? Thank you. Resin printed. Um, yeah. And then... They're bolted or stuck onto the side, and you lose yep. a door either side mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. there was originally a door. I'm and assuming then... you've also fitted headlights yeah. as so well, you, Chris. The pair of them had high intensity headlights fitted, yep. which don't come on the Helgen nope. model. So they were castings that were drilled through and popped on, and, and the radio. Up, the same with the well. RET. Ah, yes. that's yeah, a, that's that bit on the. I'll just turn one. it round so people can can see. So that's all that on the cab roof there, all that block. Yeah. There. Yeah, yeah and then you. after that, really, it's quite a standard model. Um, so, you, so you've had to take a set of doors off behind here. Yeah, just file them filed back, all them down. And then uh, the, the tanks can sit on lovely. And then it's just had a, a sort of general door to weathering because it's mm. the sort of layout that we're going to be running it on middle of the year. So it's not really going to be doing much apart yeah. from pottering about. Yeah. So it'll be paired up with the um, with the other one, and then eventually, when we can be bothered, we'll do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> do so the really, it's, and it'll get bigger. It's a subtle, it's a subtle change within the class. But if you know what you, you're looking yeah. for on a model, you go, "Oh, hang on a minute, I know what they are." It's got long range fuel tanks. It's got radio pod on. It's got high intensity lights. It's just made it subtly different than just repainting that model. Yeah, straight from I'm, the, from I'm the box. I'm a fan of Helger models. Yeah. Um, where I can cut them up because they come plastic. The plastic mm-hmm. bodies, you're not sort of wrestling with brass or an yeah, aluminium white body. metal or whatever. And yeah. You can do a lot of easy damage to plastic and not worry about the consequences. Yeah. You yeah, can get yeah. a good drill. It's very forgiving. And, it's forgiving. Yeah, it's really, yeah, really yeah. workable. Yeah. Um, so I spend a lot of my time chopping and changing. I've done 37s where I've cut noses off and bolted new <laughs> nose ends on just because it's a bit of something different. And yeah. well, that's, yeah. that's the fun <laughs> side of the hobby for me. I, nope. I'm, a, I'm terrible at our club. Um, I'll build a layout and I'll do the stock. We'll go to a show with the grand ideas of running this layout and then I'll just get bored and I'll wander off and I, I don't do the operating. I like yeah. to sit there and cut cut things up and... Cut things and model. Yeah, yeah. do a bit of modeling, yeah. get me hands dirty. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's for me, but... Ah, that's superb. Yeah, I nice, like it. Nice, different, subtly different as well, if you, you yeah. know, it's... Yeah. It's not totally finished yet, but it's... It's, it's well It was enough way. to bring in. I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll bring it in and show you as well. I've been tinkering at two o'clock in the morning and coming in tired the next yeah. day. <laughs> So, oh, brilliant! Yeah, that's brilliant. that. Well, um, 
Dave, on to you then. What have you brought in, mate? So I'm probably, to be honest, out of the four of us, the newcomer to actually modelling, so okay. to speak. All I've right. worked in the industry for years, you know, at full-size stuff. I've worked on full-size stuff mm-hmm. for 15, 20 years now, various different things. I've mentioned a few on here before. Actual modelling, modelling, people probably think, oh, God, you've done that for a while. I haven't, really, to be honest. I've, yeah, you yeah. know, I've known Chris years, yeah. and I've worked, you know, with yeah. Chris. I've built layouts with Chris, stuff like that. Chris, like you said about the Class 20 then, used to do all my models. It was, Chris, right. here's a bit of summer. Can you do that for me, mate? You know, sometimes he'd smile, sometimes he'd grumble, sometimes he'd want a bottle of whiskey sort of thing. <laughs> you know, just worked it out between us. Then lockdown happened, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to have a go at this. You know, spoke to Chris over the phone, you know, spoke to a few other mates, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm nowhere near the skill that he's got at the moment. But I've done a few bits and pieces. So this is one. It's a bit more of a work in progress, hence it's a few bits loose. Yeah. But if anyone's fancying it and anyone's thinking just that, oh, I quite fancy getting into something, giving it a go, I'd recommend starting with something like this. This is a Dapol Class 08. Um for a layout plan that needed no shunters, this is actually my sixth one now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a um, little bit of an addiction starting there, I think, guys. But they're really easy to take apart. They're really easy to put together. They're so customizable. I mean, there's nearly a thousand of the things, you know, not yeah. so much now, but yeah. there are nearly a thousand yeah, built. You can get them in every color, every size, every location. There's so many you can do that are customizable, changeable, etc. So mm-hmm. I've started building up a small fleet of sort of Northwest England 1990s ones. I remember a lot of what Chris remembers. We're a pretty similar age from when we're in our teens. You know, we're going to a fair few places together, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So I've really started to hit those memory banks as well. Started mainly weathering, renumbering. I've resprayed a couple as well. Yeah. Um, this one's sort of a half and half job, this one. Um, resprayed the roof to have the silver there on the top. One of those special sort of depot customizations. Like You'd always almost. get a bit of something like that. The red buffer beams are exactly the same there. Mm-hmm. It's had a set of rail tech numbers on it. Other than that, at the moment, that's as far as it's got. Just need to put a bit of grime on her now, get the sound chip back in here, and she'll be another one ready to go. Oh, superb. Nice. Superb. So, yeah, really cracking on. Like I say to people, it's not to the standard of a lot of people's modelling, but everyone's got to start somewhere. Yeah, you, got, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm used to doing the full-size stuff. Yeah. So it's a bit weird for me working on something this small, but especially because I work in it anyway, yeah. you know, and it's a different yeah. side of it. But the one thing I'd just say to people without wanting to sound in, like, religious or anything like that is just give it a go. Yeah. Like, you yeah, know, if you yeah. look at the stuff like Chris is churning out and Neil's churning out and think, oh, I'll never get to that. I'll probably never get to that. But it's actually a lot of it just, it's easier than you think. Pick up an old body at a show, come to us, come to Rummage Stand, grab yeah. yourself a local yeah. body or something like that, get some bits. I've always said to it. you, when you were teetering on the edge, you're like, oh, I don't know if I showed it, it's going to be a waste of money. And I just said, look, it's always rectifiable. There's always yeah. somebody mm-hmm. who'll be able to help yeah. you get it right. <laughs> You know, yeah. maybe it's not the end result you initially planned because we all look at the plan of the model and go, I want it to look exactly like that. And there's always going to be something that goes wrong. A number will fall off or you rip a transfer or there you go, oh, yeah. the mm. paint doesn't match. It's the learning part. It's the learning on the... Yeah. Like yeah. That, that happens to me here at work. On, yeah. on Sometimes something goes yeah. wrong you yeah. know, and you've got to rectify it. You've got to think, how do I fix it? But yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's easy to be go, oh, I'm putting it back in the cupboard. Yeah, that, well, that's what happens. And that's when you... You've got yeah. to work through it and yeah. go, right. Or have friends around who go, mm. oh, I'll do that for you. Just do that. Or, yeah, I'll sort it out for you. Don't worry about it. You know. I was speaking to Andy Duncan at um, the NEC because he does a demo stand on soldering metals, different metals, mm. mostly like white metals and low, low heat. That's a dark art. Uh, well, <laughs> but, but, but when, when someone like Andy Duncan shows it to you, because I sat down with him as I was walking around and I, I was chatting to him, I went, Go on, whilst we're chatting, show me what, what are you doing this weekend? And he was showing me, and because um, I had this problem when I did um, one of Jim's um, Lomax kit, yes. um, connoisseur models, uh, when you got to the uh, the, uh, the metal pieces and join into brass, and how do you do it? So I think, how do you, what's the right temperature? Because there's been soldering, soldering eyes, and all that carry on. Uh, but yeah, as soon as Andy Duncan showed me, it was so simple. And, you know, yeah. show, basically said, turn your brass into. Uh, metal you yeah. know and then join them 
So I think, and wait, and that's the other great thing, isn't it? At, at shows, especially, you can yeah. if there's demo stands yeah, there, yeah. you can go chat to yeah. someone like that. Bring bring along what you where you've got stuck as well, yeah. and then they can, they can yeah. Usually, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like you say, like the Aslam mm. show that we're going to, the Association of Logic Ages, and especially mm. the Guild shows and what have you, they, there's always a couple of demo tables, isn't mm. there? Yeah. yeah, and you kind of often think, oh, I don't need that. I don't yeah. need to look at them, but. The the guys sat behind it and the girls sat behind yeah. it. Are the most knowledgeable people yeah, in the country. Yeah, yeah. And like I I I've, I've been trying to solve stuff and I come up to you and you go, you just do this and I'm like, yeah. I'd have never thought of doing that. Yeah. Never thought of doing it that way. And yeah. suddenly a light clicks and you think, oh, that's the that's my problem. That's where I've been struggling. Yeah. So moving on then, I'll uh, go on to what I've brought in. What, um, what have you got? Well, you're about to find out. I need a hand oh. from you. Oh, all right, yeah, okay. Yeah. You wouldn't mind helping me lift this box. <laughs> Glamorous assistant. Oh, it's... assistant. Oh, what have we got? This is the first <laughs> unboxing video. <laughs> is it a coffin? It's not a coffin. I want to see it's... in your seat. Do you need help? <laughs> no, no, I know the knack is. There we go. There it's we go. It's beautiful as well, though. So. Right, yeah. That's what I brought. All that box for that. And did you engrave that, Ellis? <laughs> no. no. Dave bought it for me. Oh. Dave found it at. Did you want to get a new career? <laughs> that was the box. <laughs> Honest. Dave found it. At... Where did you find it now? <coughs> I was at um, a sort of transport collector's fair looking for a few bits and pieces. And saw the word, it does say skip to none, it doesn't it? Um, just making sure I've not bought the wrong thing. And um, thought, hang on, I know a guy who'd like that really. I know a guy who likes his railway armor and found it yeah. for Found it for a tenner, sold it to me for 20 quid. A little profit. <laughs> my sort of man. Yeah. That was my interview, you know. <laughs> so I'm too embarrassed by my uh, Lomac to bring it in and put it on camera. But um, And one day I will properly start modeling when I actually find the time. For now, what I've done for the past few years is collected railway armor, as in a big yeah. way to you the as may well. know. Yeah. yeah, and I've got a little collection of other stuff as well. But because I haven't really had the time to model other than painting a bit of Warhammer and stuff, and didn't want to bring in, I thought I'd bring in a bit of my railway armor. So this is my latest piece, my smallest <laughs> piece that Dave kindly found for me, and it's a little um, clocking in token, yeah. and obviously skipped him where we are. Uh, that's it. It's, mm. it's a weird. It's a, how did are you, you trying to find stuff you can actually no, talk about yeah, now? No, it's, trying to dig around like. Um, <laughs> no, so I, did you weather it yourself? <laughs> I did personally you, did you think like yourself? it'd be it's, nice to know where that person lived in Skipton. It would be one you know, of how close mm. to here. There must or, have family still here. Yeah. Yeah. It can't have been that long ago. Well, it's got a bit well, of blue tack on the back. Is it? Stick it on my shelf. the Midland Railway, or do we not know? Is it LMS or is it Midland? It's going to be one of the two. Well, it's going to be one of the two, isn't it? Yeah, but. That's a really good point, actually, when it comes to railway armor. It's sort of the the connection there is. It's, it's, yeah, that's, it's that's how I like it. It's not so much a connection with the real thing. It is the real thing. Yeah. I think it's you good know for Alice because there's only one of them. Whereas <laughs> 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 with the models, Alice just goes, oh, well, I want to keep it, but oh, we'll, we'll sell that one. <laughs> that's <laughs> probably like... a good point, actually. That's probably why yeah. I keep a lot of it's the railway armor, and yeah. I, I always sell the models because, I mean, we've got... It's all around here, and yeah. I've got support. I mean, even when it comes in, I look at it, I'm like, well, I'm never going to see one of those again. And I love the real thing. And I love, yeah. from going to the museums with my dad and everything like that, I still go in all the time. I, I it's love... your go-to place, isn't it, for yeah. like, meetings or whatever? Yeah. I, I just, I love the real thing. So that's that's what I've brought in. Just mm, that. Very nice. But to be fair, anyway. if you're into railway, Anna, we've got a fair bit dotted around the showroom, haven't we? It's... Not for sale. Oh yeah, no, I've got <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a yeah, sort of it, mini museum of sorts. We've got some nice totems nice. and Yeah. Even your dad's the same, I noticed there was he's still yeah, got he some keeps bits his upstairs. Bits. Yeah, yeah, he keeps his bits yeah. as well. So yeah. just for anybody that can't really see what it says, it says on here number five hundred and thirty eight, Siglan Telegraphic Department, Skipton. So it's it's uh, we're we're assuming it's like a clocking in, a clocking out um, yeah, token. Yeah, That's what yeah, we think it, it is. Be. Must uh, be. But it's obviously very local to us. Yeah. Um, it's, it's nice, like, nice to be back in Skipton. It's like one of those machines, yeah. and they've got them in the NRM where you, you put in uh, a 2p 
and a one pound, and you, you crank it like that, and it imprints onto the coin. You can use your card now. You can, can print you? a card. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> Do you get a little imprinted card coming out? <laughs> well, um, thank you, Ellis, for your token effort. <laughs> token. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Sorry. No. Oh. Oh, well, anyway, on that, yeah. uh, oh, we got, we got. <laughs> go on, Neil. What right. Well, you it looks in? like uh, obviously I'm doing the last ones. What I've brought in. As I think I've mentioned before in some of the past ones, I'm modelling um, four millimetres to the foot, but I'm modelling EM gauge. So I brought in two projects that I'm on with at the moment. One's a kit build, complete, and the other one is a conversion. I haven't seen that yet. That's lovely. So we've got a B16 III that's going to be a Murfield shed one. That's a DMR brass kit. And then the other one is a mm. real odd ball. She's a Hornby Black 5 that's been converted to a high running plate Caprotti Black 5 and obviously converted to EM gauge as well. Um, so there's some proper sort of um, plastic modelling like Chris was saying earlier on. It's had 3D printed cylinders. It's had new frame extensions that I've done out of brass. It's had some parts that have come from here off a model that was going away. Um, <laughs> I genuinely thought you were coughing for a second um, then. <laughs> which, uh, from, a, from a DGH kit. It's had some Comet etchings. Um, it's basically now just wanting cab lining, numbering, mm. and painting and weathering. Did that model originally have the square cab sides? No, or have you done that I've, as well? got, I've cut that from the original Hornby cab. I've squared the cabs up correctly. Yep. I've used the original Hornby running plate. Am I right to pick it up? You're more than all right. Thank I, you. I lifted it up. I know I'm yeah. with some glue if you knock any bit. Um, <laughs> probably very similar to what a certain manufacturer is doing this year. I was about to say yeah. when they announced that. <laughs> it's yeah. not one of their pre-production <laughs> ones. Um, I've kept the lining on this one, apart from the cab lining, which I had to remove mm -hmm. by cutting. So basically the lining on the boiler and the cab uh, sorry, on the tender, it's going to stay the same. It's had new axle box covers on from um, Comet Models. If you don't mind me asking, yep. why new axle box covers? Did you because just, they were different? they were done with um, like a Timkin roll, rollerball bearings, whereas the other ones weren't on a black five. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. for my yep. knowledge of steam not being as good, this is like the ultimate, like the final. It black was the five, final so black five, I believe. Eleven did they build something like that? Yeah, yeah. and the were the final ones were built. I think just under BR, weren't yeah. they? Um, oh, she's also got a double chimney on as well, if you yeah. noticed. Um, and then obviously on this side, just for you guys, very it quickly. Looks like a bit of a standard. It does it? look because very yeah. standard, yeah. class five-ish. Yeah, you can. And obviously yeah. she's got the lubricator drive as well for both lubricators on this side as well, which has all been fabricated. Yeah. I've got to admit, I'm a diesel man through and through, but something with a high running plate for me, I the just very like American the look and, of and it. And utilitarian, yeah. aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's that one. Like I say, the other one is a DMR kit for a B16 III. That's lovely, that one. Um, mm. She's completely out of brass uh, and some white metal. Um, she's just going through the, the lining phase at the moment. That is lovely. She's... RG, RG4 motor and gearbox in her. Sorry, I was about to do the exact same <laughs> yeah. thing you were yeah, going to yeah. do. Yeah. So that's got an um, they have an an unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do carry on. <laughs> you're, you're on one now, are you? That's it. You're on one. one. You're about... That's the same boiler as a B1, I believe. I was just about to ask boiler wise because that's an unbelievably long, long boiler. One yeah. boiler. Was it? Do you know how big the like? What did they do? Firebox smoke. Like what? Um, the one, the, B1 was this. It was basically the very similar boiler to a B1. It was the right. Thompson upgrade from an older locomotive. It was a yep. B16 one. Yeah. Um, and Thompson got a, um, a reason to rebuild some, basically. So, right. So that's why okay. she's got quite an anti antiquated looking tender yeah. on it. It's not a group standard L and yeah. tender. Still got an old style looking flared cab. Yeah. You know, but yet this here could almost be like a B one. Yeah. Well, uh, that's... So it's a bit in between, really. Even the balance weights, if you notice, have got cutouts, which is a bit yeah. sort of slightly older. So, if you don't mind me asking, or do you know, was that more powerful than a B1 or intended to be? Or was the they B1... were the same classification, but I okay. think I don't think they were quite as as up to date. Yes. They were like a midlife yeah. re rebuild that were a bit of an in between. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so a hell of a gap as well, isn't it, between the first, well, the first driver and the 
Yeah. Always the other like strange thing yeah, is it actually drives off the front wheel, not the middle wheel that you're Does more used really? to. Yeah, yeah, if you look, look. Oh, yeah, the valve gear comes in. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, when yeah. I were building it, I think, I think you know, have I built this wrong at first? <laughs> um, I had to literally I had to just quickly check that I was um, right. Um, so, yeah, that's EM gauge models that I, I model in. Um, that's a bit, is that going on your layout? That one? That'll be going on our new layout at Keithley Club's EM group, yeah, yeah, which is based around West Yorkshire, around sort of uh, Uddersfield, Dewsbury at the uh, end of steam, mm. middle to late 60s, um, as this one will be as well. So yeah, there. That's superb. So that's that's what I'm modelling. That is what you do. Smaller yep. than uh, yeah. smaller than our O gauge. But, yeah, um, I spend all day modelling O gauge. You're, seven, you're a four yeah. mil modelling. You do probably more seven mil modelling. <laughs> yeah, the rest of well, he, he, he's a busman's holiday for Neil, isn't it? He, 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 he models all day here. And to be honest, and, if yeah. if I didn't if I didn't have so much EM gauge. I would go all gauge. Would you? But it's just a fact. I, yeah. I've been doing it so long. I've so many kits to build and mm. things to build. I don't think I'll ever probably change, to be fair. The yeah, distance, fair the difference in EM to double O track is about one and a half mil it's wider. Just, just, just slightly over 1.5 1. Yeah. mil. Yeah. yeah. You've got 16.5 uh, to 18.2. Um, 18. Yeah. Have you already done the EM? Yeah, they're yeah, all converted. Yeah, yeah they're, they're all converted. converted. Yeah, on, yeah, on the pair of them. Yeah, they're already yeah. converted. Uh, yeah. That's superb. That's yeah. Superb. So that's the stuff I do. There, there we, we go. Well, vote for whose <laughs> whose collection you uh, you end up with the best. <laughs> well, uh, that were that were a nice little uh, different thing to do, and uh, we've got our challenges yeah. set for our future. Uh, <laughs> As you can see, my modelling skills are uh, going to come to the floor on this one uh, with that. Oh, um, gentlemen, a pleasure to yeah, have yeah, uh, yeah. had another uh, episode with you. We've got plenty more to come. An exciting year. Yeah. More episodes of this, more how-to videos, more on our products, more cheesy, terrible adverts <laughs> like the ones you two have done. I'm not going to get involved in those. You say but, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yet. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us all. That's been brilliant. And uh, take care. We'll see you next time. See you later. See you later. See